It's hard to open a newspaper these days or turn on the television news without hearing a story about a clinical trial that's found that a treatment for heart disease, cancer or some other condition works. These are important stories because they can influence how a government spends money and the sort of care that we receive. So there's a lot hanging on clinical trials. Karen Carey, our consumer affairs reporter, has been looking at just what happens in a clinical trial and the problems that can creep in which affect the results and perhaps can end up in treatments being badly used. We're talking about doing trials to establish what a treatment should be and it usually means comparing the standard treatment with the new treatment. If the evidence uh, is found that a newer treatment is superior to the old, then that becomes the standard of treatment. And, and usually um, uh, through the, the medical literature and through guidelines, clinicians are encouraged to uh, adopt that treatment widely. The idea of doing a randomised clinical trial is that you actually try and get rid of all the bias except for the efficacy of the treatment. The um, usual thing is to blind the study so that for the duration of the study neither the patients nor the, the, the clinicians who are managing the trial know which arm of the study, either the former treatment arm or the new treatment arm that the patient's on and that has proven to be the best way of getting rid of that type of bias. When Professor Olver talks about bias, he's talking about things that can seriously affect the results of a trial and the way the findings are seen by doctors. Now there's various ways these biases can occur. Sometimes it just comes from things like patient selection. Um, if you don't specify broad criteria and you're only putting, for example, the patients that are very well in a trial, then the results only apply to that group and won't apply across the whole of a population. Another problem with patient selection is that drug companies often choose people who are not typical of the people that are going to actually receive the medication in the real world. For example, people that have more than one condition at the same time. Now when you've got a very new treatment, uh, so as not to, to knock it out unnecessarily, often patients who are otherwise well don't have all sorts of other conditions that may influence or may make the drug more toxic are selected to go into the trial. But of course that means that the trial results only apply to that population and if you tried to put it into the general population where you had older people, you had people perhaps with a little bit of kidney failure and so on, you would find that perhaps the drug isn't as effective across that whole population or worse, it may have more side effects than you imagined. The problem is that when a drug is approved, it's not restricted to the type of people that were involved in the trial and it is often given to people with more than one condition when in fact there's no evidence to show that it's either safe or effective in people with multiple conditions. The next type of bias occurs when the paper containing the results from the study is published. There can be several types of publication bias. The most common one is that uh, journals have been more likely to publish a positive study than a negative one. The other type of bias is when um, someone who has sponsored the tr trial gets to actually write perhaps the conclusion. So they may find a statistically significant difference between two treatments, but is it clinically meaningful? If, for example, survival only improves by two or three weeks, is that something we should all adopt? And so you can get a, an over-interpretation of a small difference like that. Having said there's all these potential problems with clinical trials, they're still our best way of making evidence-based decisions. So it's really important that people participate in trials. 
and there's some evidence that they are doing us good. The interesting thing about clinical trials is that they're very well monitored um, for, for both the side effects, which means they can be treated perhaps very early if people are asking about them all the time, and uh, looking for efficacy so the drug isn't given for too long if it's not working and yet it will be continued if it's showing uh, signs that it will. What that results in, and I think it is because of this intense monitoring, is that in general people enrolled in trials do better than the rest of the population uh, if you compare the same tumour types. Now if you've been invited to join a clinical trial, there's one important question to ask. Has the trial been entered on a World Health Organisation approved registry? This means the results can be viewed and followed up and it reduces the chance that manufacturers will bury results they don't like. Think twice about being involved in a trial that isn't registered.